Yeah. We all good? Everything's good? How's it like being a lawyer nowadays? It's great, man. Except I could really use lawyer money. Yeah. <laughs> you need to start charging by the hour. We'll build Dude, it's like $300 an hour. Jeez. From what I understand, it's a lot of money. We're in the wrong business. <laughs> I think so. I found this really old bag of popcorn. I want to say it's a good year or two old. And I, uh, I microwaved it. It tastes weird. It has a bit of a stale, dusty taste to it. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm tastes, eating it still. Tastes like sin. <laughs> so you see what uh, Aaron was posting in the Facebook uh, page? Oh, I haven't checked in a while, but... So apparently there's this musician that he knows that used to be on, like, um, what is it, uh, what, what was this, uh, Jay Leno, Jay Leno's, um, his talk show, right, at night? Oh. The Tonight Show, there we go. And, um, he's toured with Branford Marcellus, et cetera, et cetera. And he wanted him on his show to talk to him and bring up some stuff and that. And, uh... He's he's kind of ghosting him now. So, <laughs> oh no, our network. I know. So he's he's trying to like do anything to kind of get uh, his attention back, so to speak. And and he's all like, "You want to give him some swag, and we'll do this." And I'm like, yeah, well, yeah whatever Bribe you him. need, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll help out whatever I can. A lot of birthdays in the last couple of days. A lot of birthdays. That's yeah, a there's thing. a lot in uh, it's a lot in October too. So we got pretty good. We got a couple, uh, most people just talking about, so we put on there about that Dr. Lynch was going to be coming on and it was really cool. We got a lot of feedback, but not the feedback I was really wanting. I wanted questions for him. You know, if anybody had a question for this or that, mostly they were just putting in like life experiences that happened to them, which is fine. But, uh, Uh the the question was if they were going to get some swag, was to give me a question for Dr. Lynch. And uh, I got, Dr. Lynch is awesome. <laughs> and I uh, got, uh, <laughs> how can fan, you get... Big fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's one. How can you get them out of an active uh, an active house? There we go. There's one. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, may I join in? I don't know what that meant. So. Huh. Oh, <laughs> like, I guess he wanted to join the Discord himself, right? I don't know. Uh, this person, uh, you could think, I guess. I don't know. But um, hmm. another one said, this one's really good. What do you think of the Ghost Hunters? <laughs> oh, yes. Peer reviews. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know I, I know. Dr. Lynch would probably be like, yeah, I'm, don't, don't, I'm not Hot going there. garbage. <laughs> you know, just kidding. This is a clearly uh, approach from a layman's term, of course. I mean, they can really know what Hot they're doing. garbage, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean this is dumpster fire. <laughs> yeah, I mean this is this is an opinion of a complete consumer, so don't don't think it means anything. <laughs> now, now this one um, was sent by Bricktop, and I and I know Bricktop. I'm not going to give his real name, but this one I actually have a curiosity for. They always talk about like demons and ghosts and everything will like scratch, claw you, push you, brush your hair. You know what I'm saying? Push you, touch you, in that kind of way. Yeah. But then he asked, has anyone, has, has any ghost ever inappropriately touched someone? And probably, right? <laughs> I know he probably was joking when he said that, but I actually have a legitimate question on that. <laughs> because you ever see the movie, you ever heard of the book movie called The Entity? Oh, man, it sounds familiar. Dude, it is a really good – it came out like in the 70s and 80s, the movie did. And the book, okay. I guess, was around the same time. So it was a long time ago. But it's even to this day, when you watch the movie, you're going, that's fucked up. Uh-huh. Because the supposed demon or entity or whatever that was in the house attached to her – and right. would rape her every night, and she'd have bruises and oh, all the stuff to show that she had been violated. Uh-huh. But sad to say, she moved from California to Texas. Now, you know they had to cross over a couple of rivers or two, but because they, yeah. they always say if you cross over a river, most of whatever was originally there is going to, you know, kind of yeah, fall like off. that's the that's the lore that we've been kind of that we've yeah. commonly seen, right? Yeah. 
But sad to say, she gets to Texas. It follows her. So whatever this is, is mm. very pretty much <laughs> gotcha, bitch. So yeah. you were going nowhere. I got you for three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, wouldn't that three be fucked up, dude? Time. If 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 if, uh, if dude, wouldn't that be messed up if that was the ghost that haunts you? It was bone saw the whole time. Macho <laughs> man Randy Savage. You, you wake up and like you're just kind of walking. Like I feel like someone's staring at me. Oh yeah. Welcome to a Slim Jim. <laughs> Dude, you walk in the house and like, I don't believe in ghosts. I got you for three minutes. You got you for three minutes. Uh, hold the elbow drop on your fucking... Uh... <laughs> oh, that would be epic, dude. I would bring over everyone to experience it, wouldn't you? Check this out. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's something you got to share. Yeah, sell tickets, do whatever. And then he gets kind of yeah. mad. He's like, oh, Randy, I, I don't feel so good. I, I'm yeah, getting no. exposed. <laughs> This is no bueno. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, he like talks in a regular voice. Stop doing this to me. Yes. Hey. Um. Show's over. <laughs> <laughs> That's a way to go. Have a heart attack on the highway. Yeah, oh. man. That's no sucks. one can hurt you but but yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that is not a good sign, dude. That's man, that's what I fear the most because I live a very mm. unhealthy life, and <laughs> I could just see my dumb ass having a <laughs> heart attack, stroke, aneurysm, d- d- dealer's choice when dealer's I'm choice. nowhere around people. You know? <laughs> so, there's no choice. To- All of a sudden, you like you this <laughs> gotcha, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, when the when the creator, he taketh, or he giveth and he taketh away, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. When it's time to for the boatman to collect his debt. The boatman. <laughs> <laughs> you better have some coins on you. The boatman. Just got to keep like a cyanide capsule around your neck. That way, if, oh, if yeah, you do go down and no one's around, you can just slip oh, that. Oh, my God. <laughs> slip that up to your mouth and bite down on it. Hail Hydra. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody will think that, you know, no you did this because you him. lived an unhealthy lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, They'll be like, man, that guy had secrets. Yeah. <laughs> that guy yeah. wanted to die <laughs> and didn't want anybody to find out how. Hydra. <laughs> no, dude, that's just funny. <laughs> that's like the motherland. <laughs> oh, my goodness. that's That just got deep there, dark and deep all of a sudden. Like nah, that. there's always time to turn it around. You know what I'm saying? You just got to have money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hell, look at all the big wigs. They can get out of AIDS. Yeah. Some deaths. <laughs> Why do you think they call him Magic Johnson? <laughs> yeah. that's, that's fucking magic. Yeah. I, we we recently went to a buddy of ours house and they're mostly like doctors and, and stuff like that. I mean their house is ridiculously cool as hell. And right, right. um and I was asking them cuz Dr. Drew on one of the podcasts talked about how we are living beyond our actual ex, uh, expiration dates. Oh yeah, it's all an experiment, man. <laughs> well, that's what I'm thinking is like getting the things that like I know, in a weird scientific, like sci-fi look at this, you know, you have somebody who gets a heart attack, right? That was like supposed to be the time they were supposed to die, and then we got them through it. So now the timeline's all jacked up in his life, or oh, man. is it like, Final yeah, oh. or is it like we, you know, you get past that, and now more complications start happening because you're supposed to be dead? Is that's how I look at it too? Like all these people who like get to a certain age and everything's falling apart on them, is it because, well, you were supposed to die months ago or something? In a philosophical yeah, or, way. Or you cause yeah. them to be more evil, like everyone around you, because well, you maybe. made them die? Whoa. Maybe. That's a, you know, that's a good, like, so there's a Stephen King book where they say that uh, one of the lines it? in there, I forgot which one it is, <laughs> but if a piece of you comes off your body and uh, you get it reattached Center. or whatever, you get evil or something like that, or something. I forgot how it went, but, like, yeah. <laughs> the Langoliers. Was that the Langoliers? Uh, no, so, I don't, so. I don't know. To go back to the point of, like, <clears throat> like if you're supposed to die and you're living long, it's because, so, you age because your cells are constantly dividing in a, you know, on a set, like, amount, and 
technically, if you like solve the equation to prevent it from dividing, you would not age. You're still susceptible to die from like trauma and stuff, but you would never age to die. So that's why things get worse because the body just constantly is, is, is the cells are constantly growing, but the body can't maintain all those cells. So eventually you'll die. That's, that's aging. Says the Asian guy. <laughs> yeah. I also heard like I, oxygen I kills down, us no matter I, I, what. I've slowed down the process. <laughs> when I get older, I'm just going to get a blood boy. Like a Travis <laughs> blood boy. <laughs> you just drink their blood and bathe in it? Is that what you mean? No, I mean, it's the, you know, you just take their blood. I mean, you don't take it, but they're like, they give it to you. By and, you use their, and you use their blood. <laughs> yeah, just, transfusion. Because they're young yeah. and youthful. Wow. Yes. And then all of a sudden you start looking like Travis. Wow. <laughs> that's, exactly, that's exactly how it works. Yeah. You Face take off. on all the, all the uh, characteristics and everything. Wouldn't that be weird? <gasps> it's like, uh, like when the... Like when the guy turns into the wolf and like the howling. Yeah. Slowly you turn into an Asian guy. It's all crunchy. <laughs> you start shrinking. Your, eye, your eyebrows change. Oh, that's messed up. <laughs> your shirt, your shirt gets covered. real big on you. <laughs> yeah. You're the, the law of conservation of mass doesn't apply. You're <laughs> Of course, if you are changing into Travis, you're going to start craving the hottest, nastiest chips ever. Oh, yeah. Man. Oh, they're going to say girls. Yeah, man. No, no. Yeah, I would. I mean, no, I would. I don't know. How would you? <laughs> wouldn't that be weird? All of a sudden, you're like, yeah, look at her. She's. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't know how to clean a toilet. Put that all over your body. Yeah. <laughs> Scrub that toilet. Yeah. <laughs> Rub that trash on you. Oh, <laughs> that's trashy. <clears throat> when we were kids, there was a 20-minute workout. This was back in the 80s. And um, one of the ladies on there, <laughs> she looked really weird, and everybody referred to her as trash. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. That's so it's weird. an endearing name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it would be so funny because like all like my mom's friends would come over and stuff like that, and they'd be flipping through the channels, and and Channel Eleven always had a twenty minute workout on on Saturdays and Sundays, and they'd be like, "Oh, trash is back on. Oh, look at her. Look at that flexibility. Sh- like, what the sh- fuck? Trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I miss that part of the eighties. We don't have that at my house. <laughs> Remember that? That was. Th- not in my house. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. Not in my house. So, how we do... Oh, nice pig, Norco. <laughs> Is that trash? No, that's not no. trash. <laughs> Is that... <laughs> that's Locklear. from... Um, uh, what Locklear. is that? Uh, Spin City. That's Headley Locklear, yeah. Headley Locklear? Mm-hmm. Wow. Hi, Cupcake. The legendary actress, Heather Locklear? <laughs> All right, Dr. Lynch, uh, how are we doing now? Okay. <laughs> I'm still working on it. Yeah. Oh, I'm man, you, you guys, I don't know if you guys are on, but he was really, really, like, it's cutting it yeah. out. Yeah. To the point okay, where so he hear, yeah. gets so high, you couldn't hear him. <clears throat> well, that's not so, good. Yeah. Well, luckily, we got Matt this weekend again, or this week again. <laughs> this yeah. Week. yeah. <laughs> For live performance oh, this week. What the? <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yeah. Please oh, talk. Yeah. Yeah, Jump in. Destroy please, us. please talk. Share. Yeah. Please talk. It is the bald. Uh, what's your name again? Bald Hubble. The bald Hubble. Yeah, it's the Matt, bald bull, an... uh, bull, bull keeper. It's Matt, the bald Matt, bookkeeper. I was thinking of an origin story for your alter ego. Oh, I like it. Let's. I'm. So, I'm ready. I'm all ears. So you're. A, so you're a bookkeeper from the streets of St. Louis. <laughs> Like the suburbs, I picture it, but more of like a Bostontonian thing, like okay. a like a Boston suburb. But either way, that kind of suburb. And you've been, you've been, you know, increasing your bookkeeping and getting into the mobs area yes. of expertise, right? Like, like, like you're getting into their funds, and they're starting to notice. Well, it's Boston, so it's got to be the Irish mob. No, it's St. Louis, but it kind of works like Boston. <laughs> okay. So it's, a, it's okay, the so, Bosnian so mob. So we're back to the Italian mob. <laughs> or the okay. Italian yeah, mob, so yeah. Italian, Italian mob, yeah. We'll go with the Italian mob. And so they tell you, but you don't, you don't fucking listen. You're just such a good bookkeeper for people yeah. that you just keep doing it, and you're getting, you know, you're getting on their last nerve. So what they do, they abduct you, and, and, they, and they decide they're going to kill you. 
they're going to dissolve you in a vat of acid. So they get the vat of acid from a cos like a cosmetic company, right? This is going to sound like the Batman, like the, like uh, the nineteen eighties Batman, but it's yeah. not that. Okay. okay. So they Freddy. put you in it, and they think that you're dead, and they think, okay, the bookkeeper's gone. You know, that guy's finally gone. But you come out of it, and when you oh. come out of it, you are completely hairless. Because they put you in a vat of nair by mistake. <laughs> and so the bald bookkeeper, or hairless, oh, as I would born. imagine, is born. That's pretty good. I think you've thought about that more than I have. I just came up with it just as we were talking. <laughs> oh, well, again, you probably thought about it more than I have. <laughs> no, no. No, no. <laughs> no, everybody's been thinking of this. <laughs> <laughs> can I was, I was the first one to put it in words. Yeah, can confirm. I've been drinking too, so <laughs> that, that helps. <laughs> helps with the creativity. The juices are flowing. I don't know what you do past that. I mean, I think just you're a pretty good bookkeeper, but you back off in the mob's territory. They're cool with it. Well, they think I'm dead, so who cares, right? Well, uh, they, I think they know. <laughs> they they know. They're like that guy's pretty hairless. Now we'll just leave him alone. Wow! Yeah, nobody can recognize him with with no hair anymore. He's like but a Lex Luthor of bookkeepers. Yes, maybe, yeah, there you go. Maybe another part of it is that you're like Professor super, X, super smooth. Like maybe there's a uh, I don't know, like a like a lotiony part of it. They can't catch you because you just slip right out of their hands. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know for sure. You cannot be grappled. We're with. gonna keep working yeah. on it. Grapple them. <laughs> I'd like to. Yeah, I'd like to see where this continues. Yeah, that's my that's my elevator pitch for the hairless bookkeeper. The I mean, elevator pitch. <laughs> I like it. Here, check it out. I, I made him Lex. I am the villain of the story. <laughs> this story. <laughs> you guys heard about that 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 little thing that happened with the Smallville cast, right? No, oh, enlightening. Cursed. It's a cursed cast, man. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just that one girl, <laughs> Allison no, no. Mack. Here, this is you know, yeah, no, the, uh, the black actor, he got busted for drugs and selling it to all of Hollywood. He was like Hollywood's drug dealer for a long time. What? That's yeah, new? Yeah. You're talking about his best friend in there? No. Yes. Yeah, no, he in got where? busted. Yeah, he was Hollywood's like drug dealer for a while. No, like after Smallville? Not nearly as bad as human trafficking, but I mean, it's You it's got still cut off notable. there, what did you say? Oh, I said uh, it's not as bad, I guess, if you want to play like a zero sum game. It's not as bad as human trafficking, but I mean, like, well, we already had not- that with Allison Mack. You heard about that one, right? That's the big one. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I thought you were uh, talking about Ernie Hudson. <laughs> no, Ernie Hudson, the Ghostbuster. <laughs> well, you uh, said the black guy, drug dealer from Hollywood. Yeah, I'm trying For to find sure. a picture of him. They don't have him. That's kind of racist. Dealer. I was going to say, I had not heard that Ernie Hudson was <laughs> big <into> drugs. <laughs> he, oh, he was a dealer. I mean, he was, he was a figurehead. Remorse. So as a dealer, you're not, you know, you don't taste the goods. Sam mm-hmm. Jones. You got people to taste it for you if you're the right kind of dealer. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> like Dan Aykroyd. Right, here's, here's another good picture of uh, the bald uh, bookkeeper now. There you go. Yeah, that does kind of look like man. A little smile there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so much in there. So- <laughs> Although he has eyebrows. You have eyebrows, don't you? I, I know, but if Did I was I dipped in into a, oh, if, if I was dipped in into hair, a vat yeah, of you'd nair, have no body hair. Problem was I would have the, nothing. Problem was the, the tub was just tall enough to fit almost all your head. Except your eyebrows. Except my eyebrows. Just those Somehow stayed above. those stayed above. Pressed against the lid. <laughs> and then how you got out with a lid being on there, I, we got to come up with that still. I don't know. Maybe there's a dog. You naturally produce uh, uh, an oily petroleum-like substance. <laughs> oh, shit, which is perfect in that next <laughs> there shot. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is what, you, this right what it looked there. like when you came out. Yeah. <laughs> Neo, I was Neo You're coming out of t- realizing I'm a fucking battery. <laughs> yeah, that's a genius. Whoa, whoa! I'll no, take I it. I was asleep for forty years, and now I'm all about budgeting people's budgets. Money, 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 money. All right, tell us real quick what you do and where to find you out there, Buttercup. 
What? Who? Softball. Who's Buttercup. <laughs> bald bookkeeper. Butter. <laughs> well, I am the bald bookkeeper. I think we've established this. Yeah. But you can find me on Facebook. I am a financial coach. I help uh, individuals and families with their day-to-day budget and their long help determine their long-term financial goals. Okay. Find me on Facebook or Instagram. Just search for and we bald concur- bookkeeper. Or is it all one word? Yeah. I mean, how does that work? It's it's all one word on Facebook, and we can come up and craft a plan for you. If you don't have a computer or Facebook, you can just get a powerful lamp and point it at the clouds and put a money sign <laughs> in the middle of it, and then he will show up completely hairless. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, from the Matrix. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of slimy. I am who I said I am. What, what was that on the Matrix? Did they say like, there was some mob. weird stuff? Did you guys hear about that, all the weird stuff that was in the Matrix? Which I just parts? Every time I see that, look at that picture that, that GIF I put up there, I was like, so when they picked him out of the water, didn't they have like a sacred heart on his chest or something like that? No. You remember all that stuff? No? no? Like from... In- like from in the, the Matrix, mm-hmm. in the movie, you remember when he gets? You remember that the GIF I just put up there, where he gets flushed out. <laughs> yeah, he, he like coughs it all up. I remember that part. Yeah, where he like he's pulling out the the feeding tube, and then all of a sudden, like the right. whole pod drains, and he gets sucked down a tube because they're yep. like you know ejecting him now, and he gets thrown yeah. into like the dirtiest sewer, <laughs> and yeah, and then he gets picked up. Yeah, and when they pick him up, they said there was a when, – when you look it down, there's a red heart, big-ass red heart on his chest. It makes and that sense was supposed to mean something. Neo is a Christ-like figure. What the oh, – dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the illusion. Is. Hold on. Let me, let me try to look at this picture it's up. Christ-like so you guys figure. Know. Just like Superman. He's got, super, he's got special powers. He's come back from the dead. Well, that's he crazy. knows Kung Fu. His girlfriend's name the – his girlfriend's name Trinity for crying out loud. Yeah. Oh my God, bro, it's over! Holy cow! I mean, did they put? Do you guys find the picture yet? Oh wait, who? No. Wh- who? What's the name of the the uh, character that turned? Is it Judas? Who? What's the name of the guy that turns Cypher? on him? Cipher, right? Cipher. Judas yeah, Judas. so that'd be his Judas. Judas. Is there a scene where they're all eating a supper <laughs> and he's explaining that his bones are bread? No, but they did. <laughs> they did drink together. The yeah, diesel they did fuel that. stuff. Oh. I'm on to you, Wachowski brothers. So, yeah, you just <laughs> took the oldest book ever and made it into a movie. Well, the, you, you know, know this is uh, this is my favorite. After they get done uh, doing their thing, he's, he's like, Meh. "No, dude, that really does give me that's creepy." Nightmares. That's like oh, trying that's... to trying to wear a mask nowadays. That's how I feel. Oh, um, too true. Mm-hmm. Can't breathe. Doctor Lynch, please tell me you're back on because these are the questions that I wanted to segue into. Was it about Neo? No, it's about masks and uh, what's new with Dr. Lynch. That's what I want to cover, like what he's doing lately, what's going on. He recently just had a birthday, so I want everybody to say happy birthday to him. And I wanted his views on all the stuff that's been happening in 2020. Is it a sign? Is it something else? I don't know. Well, the world is coming to an end. Yes. Well, yeah. Well, hopefully yeah. not in my life. We don't know when. <laughs> yeah, we don't know when. Fight with Ragnarok, baby. Come on, don't be a coward. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make him a birthday card while we're waiting. Good idea. Good idea. Thanks, Microsoft Paint. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get this picture because I'm not crazy unless unless it's not real and I was just imagining the whole thing. Unless you're out of control, man. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Mm. <laughs> we need to get somebody to. We need to get somebody out there and viewer listener land to drop some comic book stills for the hairless <laughs> bookkeeper. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we can't use Nair. Maybe that's like protected. There's probably a, a dollar store off brand we can yeah. use. We could probably pay them just under the table dollar store. We can I can't, blur I can't out find there. this picture. Oh, this is bothering me. I thought this would come up right away. Yeah, this is what happened in your simulation. I think so. <laughs> I think so. I do not remember this. <laughs> oh, 
come <laughs> on. This is so creeping me out, man, that there's no picture for this. What is it? <sighs> hey, what was it? The What was the thing? It was it the blue pill and the red pill, right? Mm, that was right. the thing? Yeah? Yep. Yep. Now, what did the yep. blue pill do? Stay in Wonderland or the red pill? Blue I don't pill remember. Stay in Travis it now. And then yeah. the red pill is awakening. So the red pill is, yeah, because uh, remember, hear say, aside from say, why, oh, why didn't I take, take the, the blue, red pill? No, he said the blue pill. Oh, okay, okay, good. Was, because that- the reason why I say this is because later on when he meets the oracle, she gives him red candy, like to keep him under. Uh, <laughs> stay woke, brother. Stay, stay woke. <laughs> yeah, stay woke. Here's your roofie. Stay woke. So. Stay woke. She roofies him. Oh, uh, 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 maybe. That's but getting cool, back to Smallville. That Allison Mack girl, she's the blonde girl that was from Smallville. And I, I was just so intrigued by this because, like, every podcast I listened to with all the cast from that place talked about how they never hung out with her. Like, they just avoided her. Oh, once yeah. She was there. She's fucking traffic. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't, like, they said they didn't know anything that was going on, which I call bullshit on. And uh, they were just all like, no, we never, you know, I don't even remember hanging out with her very much. And, like, Clark would be like, yeah, after the scene, I think one time she asked me to go somewhere with her, and that was it. And I'm, yep. I'm like, that's bullshit. You know, she was like, scouting or something. I thought that was kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she was all like, hey, you want to get lucky? I know some yeah. places where you can get lucky. Lucky Chloe. That's crazy to think that uh, Hollywood Underground, all that stuff from back in the 80s. Like, we did a lot of research on that for the show. Got to all the Gotta keep the Empire show. running somehow, man. Man. Like, like for instance, Stand By Empire? Me. When they were filming that, River Phoenix and uh, what's his name? Corey Fel- Feldman. Uh, they went to a brothel <laughs> during lunchtime. Nice. What a lunch. Yep. I think I've lost the rest of the audience here. So let's get back to something okay, different. For us. You want to call the doc and see what's going on with his audio? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Let's try to do that. See if he's okay. Right here. I'm... Can you hear me? Oh. Hey. Hey. I'm right I... here. I All can't right, hear really you. really quiet, though. I'm quiet. Just... Okay. okay. Let me let me uh, turn it up just a little bit more, but I don't want to drop out or anything. You got to, like, eat that microphone, too. You got to, like, get it in there. <laughs> as I... dim as you're coming through, the quality of, like, the clarity of your voice is good. It's just the volume's low. Yeah, okay. Yeah, how about that? Oh yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's fine. Sixty. I'm at sixty percent. Here's seventy two. Seventy nine. Sixty is good. Sixty is good. Yeah, sixty is good. Sixty is real good. You're a little. You're a little. You're not very clear. Like you're. You sound like you're on a different kind of microphone, but that's fine for today's purposes. No worries. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you're no worries. Okay oh, yeah. I, as long as I'm somewhat clear, that's all. Oh, you're, yeah, you're all good. Well, welcome <laughs> okay. again back to the show, however you want to label it. Thank you so much, Dr. Lynch, for coming back on the show. We missed you, buddy. Sure. Happy belated yeah. birthday to you. Yeah, happy yeah. birthday. Happy Thank birthday. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. You, I made your birthday card. Hang on. I'm getting ready to post it. All right. You're, look, you're looking in the room. I'm going way out of your way here. Some time Everyone's on. a winner on the Miscellaneous Podcast. Okay? I see that. Everyone's a winner. Oh, there you <laughs> go. There it is. <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. All right. <laughs> it's an egghead? Okay. Uh, it's an alien. Oh, it's an alien? Okay. Yeah, I, I couldn't make like a guitar pick size head. Like, it, I don't have the option in paint. <laughs> I like symmetry. it, though. It's nice. <laughs> That's... I like how he has exploratives afterwards. <laughs> no, that's alien talk. Oh. Alien. Oh. Hmm. So yeah, he, is just it how, the happy birthday doc that's, that's translated or yeah, that, no, that's just how Windows translates the alien talk. <laughs> they know enough English for to be able to put happy birthday. <laughs> so what's new, Doc? What's been new? What have you been doing? Um well we've uh we had to make a, a bold and brave decision. Uh, all the ghost hunters that are out there and we're rapidly approaching Halloween. And so all the ghost hunters out there need to understand that we now broken through to actual laws of physics. 
And the master equation that all the paranormal will fit into is E equals I. And as long as, as you guys were talking about, as long as the matrix remains the same, information will equal, uh, no, I'm sorry, energy will equal information. As long as the matrix remains the same and the balance of communication back and forth from energy to matter remains the same because that's in the matrix, then all paranormal phenomenon, let's say ghosts or um, telepathy, you know, mediumship, channeling, all this can fall into a physics department now called uh, E equals I. And I modified it, so it's kind of like E E equals I, meaning energetic energy uh, equals information. And the information or the energetic energy does not have to pertain to human consciousness at all. It happens whether or not we're aware of it. And, um, but it equals information of some kind. And if this is correct, then the your body, let's say your body, your the, the the reality that we are in is under an assumption of a quasi-crystal matrix and that everything is based on this quasi-crystal effect. But the energy that's inside the quasi-crystal, the quasi-crystal is just the arrangement of matter. and every, But everything that's in it is e- the energy that, it, that can flow through it, can flow through it just like um, it was just, you know, it's designed for. So let's say we uh, have wiring in our house. The electricity is designed, more or less, to be in our house, and we can use it whenever we want. And this is kind of the way this whole E equals I equation works. The electricity is there whether we use it or not, but when we do use it, when we do tap into it, we are given a whole bunch more energy and information that spans physical matter and you might say spiritual uh, matter at the same time. So the energy is, is correspondent to information. And the human mind basically is all energy. So it flows along this uh, plank uh, quasi-crystal uh, because that's the way matter is designed. So if matter was designed a different way, just slightly different, less complex, then energy would not pass through it very well. So, so let's say um, Neo's in the matrix, and and uh, Morpheus says there are some things that you can bend, and there's other things you can break. And he says the first thing out of his mouth is like gravity, and then Neo runs up the wall, uh, runs up a, a post, and does a flip, and he just you know is doing all this. Kung Fu karate stuff because he's realizing that he's back hacking his own mind and saying, well, if reality works one way, we can bend. If, if it's able to bend, then we can bend it. So he's reversing. uh, He's using the energy in order to work against itself. And then, so when he gets into the matrix, he can fly. You know, everyone says, Oh, well, that's illogical because the matrix should not have provided that, uh, effort, but if he could imagine that, then he bends the matrix in order for him to fly. You see what I'm saying? There's that saying um, the little boy makes in the matrix. He goes, he goes, um, it's impossible to bend the spoon, so I have to assume the spoon is not there, and then the the spoon bends. Hmm. And yeah, yeah I and so that's saying. the idea of reality. You're, you're reality is. Yeah, yeah. Would you say that this is like a a gift or uh, like a skill that's learned over time. Yeah. It's just um, a point of view. It's just a point of view. something that we earned as a race. <laughs> well, humans. Uh, if you talk to the Tibetans, uh, you know, in Tibet and you talk to the monks and the, you know, up in the Himalayas and they sit there and meditate most of their life and they, they can do things that are very interesting. I have seen. It's like a DLC pack for, People that spend their exactly. whole lives exactly working look at on look at the look at all the video games that have come out in the last oh, four or five years. They're um, like World of Warcraft or Call yeah. of Duty or um, a bunch of other stuff. Back in my day, 
these things would never have existed because the computer processing power and memory capacity um, just wasn't there. And so for us, you know, it would be like saying uh, Pong, you know, playing Pong on your TV set would be the maximum amount of the, of the internal matrix of this. But then all of a sudden we go beyond Pong and we're into a 3D XYZ uh, uh, three-dimensional space inside a two-dimensional computer. And so once we understand that, this is why Neo can fly, once we understand that there's a third dimension to this and we have created it and the, the computer understands it, then it's just compounding it and processing it. And so computer evolution increase in, because of our imaginations demanded it. And now we play these games almost subconsciously, uh, not even realizing that we're you know, uh, that it's as beautiful as it is, it has so many pixels as it is, you know, it's as fast as it is, it processes as fast as it does. And we're virtually mimicking, you know, because man can only create man. So we're mimicking not only our own networks in our our brain, we are mimicking the processing speed of our own brain. And so we can go back, let's say just, you know, 80, 90 years, uh, let's go back 100 years, and we realized back then that when you have a film and in a projector, it can go 24 frames and it mimics motion. We're seeing 24 frames a second, which the brain accepts as motion. Well, after a few hundred years, we decided that that was not good enough. We needed 70 frames or we needed 100 frames per second to mimic the motion. And now we're into 4K, we're into 8K, it's coming out. We can't, um, process, we can't even like like see technically, but we understand that that's what's happening. That's right, exactly. And we're doing it subconsciously because we want to mimic and uh, not not control, but mimic the environment around us to such an extent we want to control its matrix. But so to what end? But but to what end? You know, like why why does it keep going? Like when is it? When does it end? Well, that's the, that's the question. When the human imagination uh, reaches its, its far point, we will be immersed, our human bodies will be immersed in something like on Star Trek, they went into this place which was created holograms, a holodeck. And the hologram became almost like a physical reality where energy, information created mass form. And so you go into the holodeck, and it looks like you're in an infinite space, when actually you're just in a maybe 20 by 40 room. But they, it could create matter and rearrange matter as the person walks through it. So he assumes he's walking through a forest, when actually there is no forest there. It's just a holographic standard. And he can go through that forest almost as far as he wants. Um, because he doesn't realize the, the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian. What about the Mandalorian? Cut out. That's how they filmed the Mandalorian. Oh, the yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah, they yeah. put up the, the screens and yep. the uh, the screens met um, formed together. the The movie, uh, that astronaut movie, the uh, first man or the or first man on the moon or something like that. Um, I think Ryan Gar- Gosling played in that or something like that. Anyway, um, that was all done with a capsule up against. Exactly what they're using in the Mandalorian in a room. It wasn't a blue screen or a green screen. It was an actual multi pixeled background. Like you kind of see when you're driving down the road and you see these um, uh, LED uh, billboards that change. I mean, it was filmed up against something like that, and the resolution quality just tricks the mind. So now we have entire uh, institutions. Um, and colleges that help design and make movies so they trick the mind so much, we actually believe they're in a reality. This and- is why this is why I think that it's important to to remember in Star Trek when on the holodeck, they only get so many credits. Because there's some guys that I know that would be so real. <laughs> oh, they'd yeah. never come out of that damn thing once they hacked it with some porno girls. Immersion. <laughs> Immersion is too much. They would America. stay in forever. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the uh, lady in the red dress. Yeah, the, the idea of the Matrix was that the everything 
that was not quite right or everything that was odd was in red. So the woman in the red dress, everyone else is dressed in gray and black, except for the sailors, which were black and white. And so the woman in the red dress really stuck out. And it was designed to catch your attention. So when he says red or blue pill, the, the red pill sticks in your mind because it's, you know, it should have been a green for go and red for stop. Yeah, they did that same thing in American Beauty, everything that was red. Yeah, exactly. And and so the, the roses were red. The everything was red. Everything else was dead or dying. But yeah, um, everything... Yeah, everything that was odd stood out in red. And that's even a faux pas in our subconscious because policemen often ticket red cars more than any other car on the road. Because of communism. <laughs> <laughs> no, because oh my God. they're sports cars. They're, they're sports cars and most people driving <laughs> that. You know, have, have you – well, I have, but – on television, you see that red Mustang, that 1964 Mustang, it's always going to be red. You know, the uh, big uh, black cars, like chauffeured cars, are always black you know, or gray. Um, so there's always a, a twist in what the person wants you to look at. It's going to be mainly either red or yellow. And so when you're in a movie, just, you know, look at the uh, – okay, uh, look at guns when they fire like a machine gun or a pistol you'll see this red flash come out of the end of the pistol well that's fake that is a, a fake shell that's in there to create that red flash uh, most guns don't have a flash you know uh, so filmmakers are looking at what's going to be exciting you know how can we stimulate the audience and it's not the car pile ups or anything like that it's these small uh, brilliant colors that are in there that that really stimulate the, the subconscious and the mind. When a vastly superior alien culture comes all this way to take over your world, certain basic laws of planetary conquest apply. If you ever change your mind I'll be around where So we're working with not only, you know, with colors or the spectrum of color, we're working with how that applies to the subconscious mind and, and how it wakes it up. Because you could be in a, in a movie and be bored out of your gourd, and the person is in there saying, why are you bored? It's because, well, there's nothing here exciting. We're not, it's not, there's nothing exciting here. Well, if, if you don't have your, your basic human values in there, then you've got to throw in red. You've got to throw in brilliant colors. Like, uh, I love that. I loved it when it came out. It was uh, Close Encounters of the Fourth Kind. And the whole movie, yeah, yeah the whole movie is like, like mundane and boring. You know, Richard Dreyfuss is running around uh, playing with his potatoes. It's like, this guy's, you know, all these people needed help. Um, <laughs> this means and, uh, something. <laughs> yeah, I see something. I can't figure out what it is. And so, but when they actually see the UFOs, the UFOs are brilliantly colored like rainbows. And then, then the builds up to the final, uh, final scenes and the ship comes down and it's all lit up and it's brilliant. And they put on their sunglasses and it's like way cool. And then, um, they do that uh, thing with, with the piano to come out with different colors, means different symbols, different languages, and it goes through the whole thing, and the computer starts to download it all, and then they, they have some form of uh, they have some form of language, and that is that is why you know filmmakers like Steven Spielberg that was all done with the black sky with stars and and then put in clouds, so it was like you couldn't see anything but the spaceships, you couldn't yeah. see anything. But these colors and it's driving the the psychology of the of the viewer into into this uh, paradigm of like oh yeah man these are real extraterrestrials you know all this other stuff and Spe speaking of close encounters I, I think it's worth noting especially for the people who who may be listening that frequently when when we have you on as I, as I've been explained to by Polly too is that we get a weird distortion that happens with your equipment. And yeah. we're getting that now. 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's it, not so like it went really that clear. We describe. Yeah. We, it's not like anything that we can describe because none of us have the, quite the problem that you're having now. It's okay. We could still hear you, but I think it was worth noting. And then yeah. um, speaking yeah, of well, speaking yeah, of close sorry, encounter, well, no, now right. you're clear. It's now like clear. when you start getting into these things, that's when it all goes. And and thank you, Norco, because that's exactly what happened since day one that we've had you on the show. Really? We've always had. Remember when all the power to my house went out and you called yes. me? I mean, that yes. was. It's cool, but it's creepy. It's at the same time. kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, have you ever had contact with someone who's had um, a close encounter? Doctor? Oh yeah. Oh oh yeah. yeah Can definitely. you explain that? What was that? How did that work out? Uh, um, there's an old saying, and I never. It, I never thought it was true, but there's an old saying that says when you look at the paranormal, sometimes it will look back. It notices you at right. the same time. And uh, I actually belong to a group called Contact. It's on Facebook. And there are a lot of people there who have had repeated uh, contacts with the grays, extraterrestrial grays, the zeta reticulans. And it really freaks out. And it really freaks them out. Um, the odd part about the whole thing is that uh, if you're in a real contact situation, if you're in a real contact situation, they erase your your memory. And so when they put you back, you know, you'll have missing time. And a good one will always erase your memory before they send you back. Really? And so... And so when you go back, you're not supposed to remember anything at all. But do you, um, yeah. do you remember the the show, the sightings, or I forgot it's called sightings back in the nineties? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They yeah. had an episode on there where a guy was having nose issues. He went in and they pulled out this metal square looking thing, and yeah. when it gets to like uh, a certain temperature, like ninety seven, whatever, it sprouts out weird looking legs and stuff. And oh, the I guy had no memory whatsoever of how it got in there, whatever. But he noticed like he had pain in his nose, but he didn't know what it was. It's stuff like that that really kind of solidifies. Like there's other – there's of course, Sightings is a big show about all that stuff. There was another one where they said they uh, they heard some noise outside their back backyard. They looked at, out through the window, and it's a bunch of construction workers that looked right up at them. And that's all they remember from the, 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 the night. <laughs> It, I, not to sound morbid, but I love those kind of stories. I love that stuff. That's what I grew up with. I, and in hearing you say these things, Dr. Lynch just even like geeks me out even more. <laughs> uh, well, this, the, one of the most unusual uh, cases was this young girl who um, was uh, at a party. She meets some friends and the friends go, Hey, let's go back to, let's go back to our house because we have more booze there or whatever. And she says, yeah, sure. No problem. So she's with the girl she knew and these two guys, she did not know anyway. So they drive to a house and uh, they sit there and they listen to music and they party and they drink. And then the two girls go, okay, we need to go home. And the guys go, no problem. And they take them home. And, uh, Later on, the girl asks her friend, you know, remember that party? We went to that house. And she goes, yeah, we haven't seen those guys in a long time. Anyway, so one girl said, let's drive by that house. And so they went and they drove by that house, but the house was gone. It never existed. Hmm. <laughs> and hmm. and so they don't even, they, they think that was an alien contact situation. And that this was just like a temporary structure or whatever. Yeah, like it was their but, camouflaged spaceship. They had a party in their spaceship. <laughs> sounds, so, like that, sounds like that story Josh tells about these trees were not here. Hey, I was there. I actually <laughs> witnessed that because I'm not kidding you. These trees were not like gargantuan trees, but they were like a good grapefruit size around trees that don't take – you know, it takes a, a year or two to grow. And we were there, What I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> now, there is, and I think... Um, it, it would be better if Josh was here, then he could tell the story a lot better than I can. <laughs> yeah, there is... And I have a, this question, and I've asked several contactees this question. I said, do you ever feel like you've been sent back in time 
and then come forward, pull forward. And none of them really knew because they would be either blacked out or have just fragmented memories. The weird it, part about this would that be if, like deja vu type experiences, or yeah, that'd be a lot of a lot of deja vu experiences. Huh. But it's a lot of times when they do surgery on an individual, um, they're the surgery heals up incredibly fast. It is as if, you know, hmm. uh, a, a real surgery. I mean, let's say, let's, let's say open heart surgery. Okay. We would, we would do things a little bit differently here, but it would still take time for that body to heal. Those cells have got to heal. And, um, it seems like when the, the contact is returned, they're, they, they are already healed up. And if they have a little scar or a little thing like that, it's normally what we call bio glued back together. And there is some type of glue. Non- I mean, there's no needle and thread here. There's, there's no sutures. This is a glue which glues bodily parts together. Hmm. And so you would take, let's say, if I cut my skin. And there is a product called New Skin, which you can put on it, and it kind of seals it up and things like that. This is to something different where they pinch it. They pinch that area which they cut. They glue it, and then they release it. And when it's released, it virtually is healed. And you'll have a minor scratch there. And you'll think, oh, my, my pet cat scratched me or, or something scratched me. And they'll just go on with their day. But with major surgeries that I – you know, I'm aware of uh, those those wounds healed up within weeks. I mean, days. See, I'm, say, I'm not one of those people that like when I when I find a scar on me that I was like, oh, it was probably the cat scratch me. I immediately think of aliens. I immediately think that I was abducted. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> but they see they they mask it, they cover it up to where we just we just. Uh, yeah, we, we brush it off for some common sense answer. But right. Yeah. Only know if you ever change your mind. They might be giants. What did you think of the uh, when they when they opened up the JFK files and they they found out like Hitler was still alive and then they recently oh, came yeah. out with UFOs are real. Oh yeah. What do you think of like so that's the next question that I'm segueing into. What is your opinion on 2020 all this stuff, the recent stuff that does all came up? I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. Give me a, a kind of a roundabout answer, I guess. Uh, <laughs> sorry. It, I, sorry. I, I did text you saying I was going to ask these <laughs> these questions. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh it's hard to it's hard to express in a in like an, an easy sentence. But I I want to impress – I've got this from both sides. So, you know, I've, I've gone all the way to the conspiracy edge people who I associate with, all the way to the biological, scientific realm who I deal with. And um, what I'm going to say is they gave us some time to sit down and try to, to define – the best parts, I mean, to make our lives better. So it's like saying, you need a time out. So we're going to put you in the corner so that you can figure out your life. And are you using your life the best possible way? And that is exactly what this is. This is a time out. We took a whole year. And so if you haven't done your meditation or gone on that diet or made your life, improved your life in some way, then this was your, that, this was the opportunity to do it. Because I know how um, this whole thing, this Wang Chung virus got started, COVID-19 got started. And I know how rapidly it went through our, our society. Now, um, I know on the other side, which was totally the biological side, and they say exactly what the conspirators say. Um, this was designed for warfare. It is a bioweapon, period, at the end. And, and they meant to get it into the population to see, uh, to kind of cull the herd, see, see what would actually happen. How we, would we react? Now, we can say the same thing. Let's say ex- extraterrestrials come 
and they want to get rid of us. Well, this is the exact same way they would do it. They would do it with a virus that we have no immunity to, bio, biogenetically created, meaning they had a virus, they mutated it, and then they reset it back into the population. And then that is the whole key. That's the whole key to the whole thing. Uh, Gentlemen, if you ever have any time to look up stuff on the internet, look up CRISPR. Look up CRISPR. Yeah, and the, CRISPR. Gen- altering genetic code. Exactly. One gene can alter a virus to make it lethal. Altering one gene. So it doesn't take much today no. in the 21st like, century. Is this kind of like, like – I don't know if this is kind of road you're going down, but is this kind of like – what they did to uh, different populations, ergo, they they sprayed Agent Orange in the air over here in St. Louis. They put dried bleach in, in St. Louis just to see what it would hurt our lungs or not. Are you saying it's kind of like something like that? Like they did yeah. purposely threw it out there to see what is going to happen? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Monsanto, Monsanto creates Agent Orange. As a defoliant to fly over Vietnam. Vietnam was the country of seven colors of green. It was always green all the time. And so you couldn't see the your enemy because if they wore green, they just blended in. So Monsanto came up with Agent Orange, which then was sprayed over rivers and valleys and villages and everything over in Vietnam. And then the next in a couple of days, in less than two days, the American soldiers were walking through it, and they were it was all dead. So wherever they sprayed Agent Orange died, okay? And then these military guys were getting it on their boots to get it on their clothes because it was just a, an aerosol. And, and people look back and say, well, that was incredibly dangerous. And Monsanto goes, oh, no, it was, it was okay because military men volunteered to go to Vietnam, and they, you know, they deserve whatever happens to them until – you know, 50 years later, they say, no, it's a, we need a lawsuit because they destroyed their lungs is yeah. what it did. And, yeah, my dad's um, on that lawsuit because he had uh, – <clears throat> he got diabetes, heart disease. He got a litany of things that they all can trace back to that because he worked on airplanes and he said that stuff would just drip on his shoulders and neck all day long. Oh, do yeah. Think, uh, do you think the Vietnamese also sued – Against that, like the other side. <laughs> Seriously, I wonder. Yeah, that's like, a good question. Have a I don't know. Years later, I mean, now, so their warfare is still. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, no, no, but, that's a great question. I don't know. It's kind of like in uh, uh, Chernobyl uh, when all that went down. I mean, their their generations are going to be completely screwed. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, the the decomposition of the human cell around that type of radiation is extreme. Is this is extreme? Um, when uh, we were using, well, I'm going to sum up the other the last one. Right now, most farmers are using Agent Orange when they do their pesticides. That's why Monsanto genetically modifies only a certain amount of uh, grains and soybeans, uh, which they've patented. They've patented most of our food. So, yeah, it's so called that's Roundup why, now. Yeah, it's called Roundup, but that was the same almost Agent it's Orange stuff, yeah. scenario. And the French, what? Germans, uh, Italians, crazy. Spanish would not use – they did not allow uh, Roundup in there. And they did not allow the seeds, the genetically modified seeds, to be in their country. They put hmm. a, a moratorium on it and said, no, we don't want anything from Monsanto at all. So yeah. Monsanto runs to India and tells them that we have uh, – and also in certain Asian countries, we have genetically modified rice that can withstand monsoons and all this other stuff. But you got to buy Roundup to put on it. Oh, it, it works hand in hand. Oh, yeah. that's bad. So, oh, oh, it's, it's all it is, about it, the money, Lebowski. Yep, it's uh, <laughs> it's all about the money, man. And so, um, so it goes global. Okay, so Chernobyl blows up, right? The radiation of Chernobyl goes global. It goes around the Earth. And in the area of Chernobyl, and I'm sorry to say, people are moving back in there because it's free rent. But people around that area, the water was destroyed, contaminated. The animals are contaminated. The, the land was contaminated. And it'll be contaminated for another 300 more years. And this is the softest fallout you can possibly ever get. Um, when Fukushima blew up, when Fukushima uh, nuclear power plant blew up, 
uh, that radiation now has circumnavigated almost the globe and it has poisoned the entire Pacific Ocean. And we monitor this through satellites, radi- radio, uh, the radiation through satellites. See, that, so change, know, that changes up. So that does that affect global warming, climate change? Do these yes. events – thank you because a yes. lot of – all the stuff I looked up when then people were talking about glo- uh, climate change and stuff like that and they said it's all man-made. Well, you could look at it that way. But it, there's the volcanic erush- eruptions, um, stuff like that all affect climate change. So, OK, Mount, cool. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah when, when Mount St. Helens blew up in Washington state – that ash went clear around the world, and they found it in the South Pole. Mm-hmm. So that's like nuclear winter, where you have, okay, the fires in California today that are happening now is affecting St. Louis today. So that ash from California is blowing in the upper atmosphere and yeah. causing us to have weird weather. Yeah, because they were also saying that that the haziness from several days ago was from that. Wow. Yeah, there were some beautiful sunsets. If if I I put you in downtown Los Angeles during the day and walked you outside, you'd see the same sky that we had a couple of days ago. Mm. And I, I grew up in California, and I said, man... I said, this is a California day. There's, it's dry. There's no sunlight, no direct sunlight. There's no, it, but it's just constantly you know, overcast skies. And for a weatherman, for any Joe Schmo, Channel 5, Channel whatever <laughs> channel you've got, weatherman, who can't put this together, is just an idiot. Just an idiot. I don't know why he went to school for anything. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm. Because... We live in a biosphere, and that biosphere is affected by the jet stream. So if I – it's kind of like if I have a 1,000 butterflies in California, it's going to rain in St. Louis. You see what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. the butterfly effect. Yeah. We can't escape it. We can't really escape it. It's, it's like I have nowhere to go. If I go to Alaska, I'm going to get that ash. Uh, I'm going to get the ash and the earthquakes just like they do in yeah. California. If I go to uh, the South Pole, I'll get it – You know. I'll get it. Just you know, I have Australians. There's Australians that come online and they go, Ew, "Did you see the sky today?" And it's like, <laughs> "Where's all this coming from?" Well, it's coming from California. Man. Yeah, it's, you're welcome. It's going Thanks. around the globe. Remember when you burned up your place? We saw it too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when when Australia was on fire, uh, New Zealand got the worst weather. You know, they, constantly overcast, and they, mm-hmm. they they had no clue. So if you have, you know, like I said, if you have any sense about the uh, biosphere of the Earth, you know, like I said, okay, it's like this. It's like this. You can, you can have poop. You can have a lot of poop, okay? <laughs> and, and that methane and that methane. Now you're talking our language. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can, okay, you can go and flush your toilet and you can poop all you want. You're not going to me- you're not going to mess with the weather that much, okay? Because that's just methane. That's a methane gas that goes out, and that's just the way that is. Okay. Uh, Wild Bill Hickok came to uh, America and killed millions of buffalo. Okay, and um, they you know sold the hides and all that other stuff. Well, anyway, before that. Um, the buffalo were there were so many buffalo and they were eating and pooping and eating and pooping. Kansas is flat because the buffalo ate all the trees hmm. and the grass. And about the time that herd reached maximum capability, meaning the most that's ever been on the planet, because they had really no natural predators at this time. Um, Shelley. A uh, girl named Shelley wrote the story about Frankenstein. And at the time, the uh, English were having the worst winter they possibly could have. Overcast skies, snow, ice, freezing. And so Shelley wrote this, uh, the ending of Frankenstein, where he goes up to the North Pole and, you know, gets into the ice and dies, you know, dies up there or whatever. But the deal is that England was under an, almost an ice storm. And they couldn't figure out where it was coming from. And then they, you know, then 50 years later, when they all go to, I mean, more people go to the Americas and start killing buffalo, then all of a sudden the weather just panned out again. 
remember when there was a, a, an anniversary of John Lennon's death, and they had it in England. And on that one day, it snowed. And it never it hasn't snowed there hardly again. Mm-hmm. It's like every 20 years. It's like in California. It never snows in California. It wins every 20 or 30 years. Well, you can't have hurricanes like we're having, El Ninos that we're having, and all these fires that we're having and not think that something is up somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, and well, That's why one of my biggest uh, like pet peeves is, is – so say we get into the discussion of some controversial or I don't know why, like climate change. It's, it's, it's the denying – it's the ones that straight up deny that this thing exists, period. They just don't – it's a zero-sum game. They don't think it's okay. It could be affected by these multiple things. This is how you can explain it. But rather than that, they just say, oh, well, you know, that, that's just not it. It just no, it gets warm sometimes, you know? So not, what everybody's saying, but climate change has been around since the dawn of man and stuff? Of course, because or like – Before like, then, maybe? Yeah. Why it was different yesterday? Why it's going to be different tomorrow? Why wouldn't, why, why wouldn't it have existed since the beginning of time? Yes. Okay. Well, yes, but it depends, <laughs> it depends how you look at it. Okay. So <clears throat> in Egypt, about 3,000 years ago, so, 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 so – uh, a pharaoh sat there and said, man, i got the greatest civilization in the world. We are steeped in tradition. We, are, we have slaves. We have everything going for us. Okay? And then this guy comes in named Moses and says, well, if you don't change your ways, if you don't let my people go, there's going to be massive problems. You're going to have plagues and everything else. Oh. And, and Pharaoh goes, Nah, that's never going to happen here. We got the greatest army in the world. We got chariots. We got, you know, medicines. We have the greatest magi ever to, uh, you know, know about the mystic arts. And then, of course, Moses comes back again and says something else. Now, what Moses is really getting to is that there's a volcano in Africa that's going to explode. And it's going to turn the Nile into uh, mud. It's going to turn into red mud, which looks like blood. And so Pharaoh is sitting there with a pretty solid view of the world, but then there's this one little adjutant called Moses that comes in and messes it all up. And then he doesn't blame the volcano that he knows that he knows has exploded. He comes in and blames Moses for it. And that's kind of the way it, we are today. Everyone is so set on, hey, I got a good place to stay. My car is running pretty well. I got a little, you know, money in my in my bank account. And uh, when the jobs come back, maybe I'll get a better job. But the deal is, is that there's going to be that one person that's going to say, no, this this won't last. This is not going to last. Hmm. And yeah. what's going to happen? Is the, four, is the four riders of the apocalypse? You know, drought, famine, death, death, and power. That's you will interpret it as some sort of, uh, you know, supernatural phenomenon, which it could, you know, go hand in hand with the reality you allow it to be, you know? So. Yeah, no, no. Talk about global warming. There was a time when the Roman Empire went into Britain and pushed the, the Britons back into Scotland, where Scotland is now. And they were able, during that time then, to grow grapes. And they had grape vineyards in, in Britain because it was so hot in England. And so, so when the Romans pulled back, they left some of the vineyards there. And the, the Britons, the blue people, or the, Brit, the Anglo-Saxons, came in, and then they were like trying to maintain those uh, vineyards. Okay. But the weather changed on them, and then all those – they didn't have a long enough growing season for the grapes to mature. And so what happens is that those vineyards started to die out. And you can go to uh, Britain today and see where the Roman structures were, the, the Adrian's Wall and, and the, the buildings that were there. And I've been there, and, and uh, I've seen, um, you know, little uh, crosses, you know – uh, where the Romans built uh, mosaics in the floor and, and beautiful columns, and, and they had uh, a working, you know, like a working farm, uh, things like that. And so you can see the remnants of the Roman Empire more in England than almost any other country. Probably Spain is the only other one 
but you can see the remnants of the Roman Empire, and that wasn't that long ago. And they were able to grow grapes and uh, exotic fruits and things that they brought up from Italy. But now you can barely grow wheat because the growing season is so small. It's so small. Wow. Hey, Paul, Paul, how much time we got? We got. We're pretty much done. Um, but I want to oh, do this I'm last sorry. thing. No, no, no. Thank you, thank you. I was getting ready. I was waiting for the story to end anyway. But I just want to. Uh, every week we do on our miscellaneous podcast page. It's the uh, group page. We I throw out a, a a question and I promote stuff. So I said that you're coming on the show. Put your nice little picture on there and. <laughs> I give out I give out little swag gifts for you know who whatever I pick is the best one. Now this one comes from a buddy of mine. We call him Bricktop, but uh, uh, we talked about this in the beginning of the show. I don't know if you're listening in or not about that, but it's uh, he was making it as a joke, but it's an actual question I really have. So his question is: Has a spirit ever touched you inappropriately? <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yes, <laughs> but yeah. Wait, oh, I'm really? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh no, not me, not me. But I was I was referring to like the the entity is what I was referring yes. to. Yeah. Yes. Um, there yeah, were two guys, pretty. Bill Bill Roll and David uh, no, Taft. What was his name? What was his name? I would say David Taft. That's not it. It's uh, Barry wow. Taft. Barry Taft and Bill Roll made their careers off that case, and that case was absolutely true. That that movie was the absolute truth. Now, I've come across a couple of investigations where this exactly did happen, but it was not the woman's husband that was raping them. It was just some entity coming in and having sex with a girl, you know. Um, is is that what happened to, on the entity? It was supposed to be her husband's spirit? Yes, on the entity case, oh, shit, by know. Barry Taft's explanation, it was her dead husband. And the the, the thing was, is that... Um, the thing was, which was, which, which, which was the joke, was death do you part? And, oh. and he said, no, she's still my wife, no matter if I'm dead or not. And this is, this is a strange... Uh, not in 2020, buddy. Yeah, not, this is a strange situation <laughs> yeah. because for, <laughs> for someone to have died, they don't really have that much spiritual energy built up to do what was really happening. I yeah, think that's why like I was thinking it was a demon or something that's obviously inhuman because that is a lot of energy, like you said. Yeah, it's a lot of energy. And, well, they kind of made it a little bit more on the movie, but Barry Taft and Bill Rolls would say, yes, she would be uh, not levitating off the bed, but her legs would be straight up and she was in – sexually prone positions and she would be screaming and then they would, you know, kind of open the door and start taking photographs and things like yeah. that. But, uh, that the deal weird, was <laughs> that, uh, that, that it was the very, one of the very first cases they used Polaroid photography, uh, Polaroid cameras. And during some of those sessions where she was being violently attacked, uh, they took the photographs and actually caught this, Big entity, big white blob, right there in in the uh, in the room with her. Do those images then, exist? Like, there are they out on the internet? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't. I don't. Maybe maybe so, but I don't. I don't think so anymore. Um, the Barry taps it there instead. The only conclusions they could come up with at first, they thought she was doing it to herself, and then later on, they said, "No, she's not doing it to herself." Okay. And then they go this whole thing. They, they go to a medium, and the medium comes in and tries to get rid of the entity. But the entity disappears, and they go, okay, the case is over. Well, when she moves out to another area, it's, <laughs> that entity came back and started all over again. So I don't think they ever really closed that case. You know, if, that, if that movie was remade in modern times, you just have to, we'd have to harness the power of Twitter. And me too, that fucker into a Weinstein level of just like obliteration. I mean, he, yeah, just, you know, he wouldn't be around. That. That'd be brilliant. Just Twitter him, Twitter him to the me to him, you know? Get your hands off her. The, uh, the whole thing in the, in the movie Ghostbusters, the movie Ghostbusters, the guy said, we've got to find a way to put these, uh, you know, get rid of the entities. And so they, they come up with this ghost trap and ghost storage and you know, all this other stuff. And that could not really even exist. We don't have enough power 
out of our sun to encapsulate all the spiritual entities. And you got Walter Peck characters that open it up. Exactly. And so, and so they had to make some way of like saying, well, we're not going to use a spiritual medium. Uh, we, we want you to build it. You know, we're just going to say we have a device. But what was really keen on the people who did Ghostbusters is their backpacks um, that shoot out this uh, photon radiation kind of thing, which encapsulates them. And Egon keeps saying, it's like, well, I haven't fully tested this stuff. And I go, I blame myself. And, and Bill Murray goes, yes, I blame you. I blame, I do blame you too, you know. But that is a way, that is a way to affect them. And so the guys who did Ghostbusters did do those proton packs correctly. It's just the storage was totally incorrect because they didn't want to use a psychic medium or stuff like that, which I thought would have been really comical to have done, but they didn't want to go that direction. So um, there are, you know, like I said, there's glimmers out there of uh, real science into the paranormal, but then all of a sudden it's like, well, you know, we have to end it here and and then go on. But yeah, if you, I want one of those Ghostbusters photon packs so bad. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a they're, real life version one. But I mean, they're not so heavy. Photon, and, but. and they're a particle accelerator, a nuclear accelerator, so you could never really, I mean, no matter how tight I've, you put it on, it would gain in, in energy and mass so much. It'd be so. Be I just hard. want the prop. Jeez. I don't need a yeah, yeah. accelerator. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, yeah, I think you know uh, Barry Taft's pretty much retired right now, but you know he's he's still out there. You can check out Barry Taft and Entity Case, and uh, and uh, you might be able to find some stuff on Tumblr or uh, you know out there on the internet, maybe on YouTube, uh, and they can mm. they, you can find some stuff like that, which. Again, I found I've, I've duplicated all that stuff, and I know that those things are authentic. So, without being fake, uh, I was showing a friend of mine. I was on another radio station, and I showed a friend of mine a, a copy. You know, it was it was a signed autograph copy of uh, another case, which I didn't need to bring up. But anyway, I said, "Now look at that. Uh, look at this. Look at this." I said, "Now is this E equals I?" Is energy making equal information? And he looked at it and goes, "Well, I don't know. This can be photoshopped." And I said, "No, look at it." I said, "That's a Polaroid, Polaroid picture." So that writing on the Polaroid picture had to take within one tenth of one second. And he looked at me and goes, "This could be fake." And I said, "No. There are four people, each one of them with Polaroid cameras, each one of them flash almost simultaneously, and they got all the same information." And this is a book that's out, but it's uh, it's anyway. It's this guy who lives in California has this old house, and this spirit is writes to him with ectoplasm, you know, with the spiritual like smoke, and gives him like fortune cookie kind of huh. input. That's cool. And it's, it's really it's really fascinating, and I oh god, I wish I knew the name of that book. But it's online. People can go online and, and take a look at it. But it's all right, Doctor. Uh, uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you yeah, off. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, where can we find you at right now? Where we where can we look up more stuff from uh, all oh, the stuff? You're about? Uh, I haven't made any new YouTube stuff. I've got. I have to remodel my house, of course, and uh, so I have to real life that. always comes first, you know. <laughs> Real yeah, reality you know, it sucks, but um, yeah, I haven't. Publish anything in a little while, but I will publish. And I'll let you know because I can find you, and I'll let you know. I'm working on this. Uh, I'm l- working on a little video of of E equals I, and if e equals I is what I think it is consistent with with my research, then it explains almost all of the paranormal uh, hmm. as we understand it today. Now it could change, but it, as we understand it today, um, all of the paranormal. Fits into E equals I, and there's not anything out there that does not. I mean, I could throw in the Ouija board, I could throw in automatic writing, I can throw in psychics, I can throw in whatever you want it to do, uh, and it will and it, uh, and it will equal out or, or explain. That's really cool. It, it, it all yeah, yeah. Awesome. when you get it done, yeah. please send it to us right away so we can right. take a look at that cool. Stuff. Oh yeah, I I have a little write up on my Facebook page when I push that out. Uh, a little write-up, meaning that there has to be several parameters that have to be consistent. 
And it is consistent through the Mellenbrock geometry and the quasi-crystal geometry. Mm-hmm. And if that, is the, if that is the geometry that we're working with, that is all we call right. do a dynamic. Uh, doctor, I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but you're getting right. really, right. really chopped up every time you talk about ghosts. So oh. we're going oh, yeah, <laughs> to end they this now. They don't like it. They're here. They don't they like it. Right here. <laughs> They're listening to me. They're listening to me. <laughs> so I want to thank everybody okay. for being on the show. Thank you again, Dr. Michael Lynch, for coming thank on the show. Again. We love having you. And sure. um, thank you, Bricktop, for your question. We're the one I'm, I picked your question for that. So you have your choices between Polly's cardboard box or Johnny K's uh, foot locker to pick out your miscellaneous gift. Please get back to me on that one you can find us always at the miscellaneous podcast.org we'll have the shop back up there pretty soon so you guys can start helping out the show a little bit more and uh you also have on facebook look up the bald bookkeeper he'll help you out from all over there so anybody else have anything else before we get going and google search michael lynch and his various exploits from the past Nice. Why did I feel bad for not saying thank you, man? <laughs> and thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Lynch. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Good night, everybody. Oldest ride, longest line.